Hey folks, David Stewart here. Less is more when it comes to color. This is the subject of today's little instructional video. Hopefully this video will be appropriate for people who are interested in art, people who are looking to design book covers, people who are looking to buy book covers if you're an author, shopping for an image for a book cover or looking for a cover designer, or you're trying to design a CD cover for a band or something like that. This is some very important information about how you go about selecting the colors that you're going to use for your image and why you should actually use fewer colors for your overall composition, especially if you're in the digital space. If you want your artwork to really stand out when it comes to color, less is more. So let's start by looking at a couple of images from one of my favorite fantasy artists. His name is Karen Byatt. He has done covers for a variety of books as well as CD covers. He did um, the last two Twilight Force albums. That's where I initially contacted his art, and then I saw everything else he did. I ended up licensing one of his images for one of my books here, um, The Water of Awakening. You can see an early version of the cover. This is actually a pre-release cover, so the cover really looks different from this. Um, but I loved his art, so I ended up using it for one of my book covers. And one of the things that I love about his art, as you will see, is that he has great mastery over many things, but especially his ability to control color, his ability to use a limited selection of colors to have a big impact. And it is an even bigger impact in the digital space where you maybe are seeing a book cover as a little thumbnail rather than seeing it as a big piece of art on a wall. Like if you go see a Baroque painting in a museum, that art is suited to a different format. We're talking about art that is made to sell, and so fewer colors is better. So if we look at this first picture here, we have this awesome dragon, and he is looking like he's descending upon a guy at a Stonehenge kind of scene, and it looks really good. You know, it has a very scary looking dragon. It has some bold colors. It has what looks like some sort of wizard, and we have Stonehenge 3, essential elements for the composition that go together. But if we look at the color, uh, the colors, we realize there's really only two color areas. There's green, and then there's this orange, orange that's kind of going towards yellow. This uh, orange really only exists as the fire surrounding this wizard and everything else is green and we can see the orange is kind of bleeding onto the ground here but then it goes back to green and it's going onto the stones but if we look closely at the stones you'll see the stones are actually painted green as well the highlights are a lighter um, a lighter color of the green you know mixed with white and the dragon indeed is green except for his wings which have a little bit of red I don't know if you can see them but it's the same really the same orange it's kind of a very desaturated orange that exists in shadow so he does a great job with this there's really only two colors but if you were to see this image even from afar, it would catch your eye because of the bright and brilliant green and the range of light and dark that exists for that green. You can actually do a ton of work in your art just with the range between light, dark, saturated, and desaturated to produce all of those different shades of a single hue. Um, you could do that for a painting in the real world using starting with one color of paint or in the digital space starting with one specific hue. Let's look at the next one. And this one has what we would probably interpret as uh, three colors. However, when we look a little closer, we realize it's basically the same color palette from the previous one, but with white included. In this case, the background is green once again, and that produces you know, a, a kind of dark and mysterious background to it. And we have a range of green from very light to very dark. You can see the rocks are mostly dark and they're orange where they are reflecting the actual light. And so the dragon here is orange. The shepherd here is mostly wearing orange. And then we have a white dragon and white sheep. So we only have three colors if you include white. And white, of course, is a neutral, more neutral color maybe you don't have to count it as a color, but nevertheless, it has a big impact. This white uh, really stands out from the green that is surrounding it. And this has almost no green mixed in with it, but if you look very closely in the shadows, you'll see that indeed it is shaded with green quite a bit. So it's mostly just green and red, and we have this bright neutral white that really pops off of the background and has just a great look. Notice the high contrast between dark and light and the the few numbers of colors. One more painting by him. This one seems like it has more colors because we have like all these lanterns and we have, you know, a, a, a kimono here. 
But if you look carefully, you see that there's only, again, really two to three colors we have blue this is actually not gray we kind of perceive it as gray but it's definitely shifted into blue it's just a very um de it, it's a very desaturated blue that uh, is mixed with white and then more with black to get these uh ranges of the color so we have blue kind of kind of towards the green so a little bit teal i actually like to have grays that are slightly teal they're like very desaturated teals and i'll show you some of my book covers in a second as we go for that and then we have the orange colors of the lanterns which really really stand out over this blue so blue and orange are complementary colors and they really pop so teal and orange um yellow, blue and orange because they're complementary they're on opposite sides of the color wheels they have a really really vivid kind of appearance and um, it doesn't look quite as shocking as if you had a fully saturated blue and fully saturated orange next to each other which would be almost an eyesore it's too much but when you desaturate the blue, it looks great. Then we have the red kimono, and we have red on this guy's uh, this little bandana. But if you notice, even the hair of the uh, of the subjects is really gray. It's not uh, it's not very colorful. And so that's to make these lanterns really pop and stand out and and really look like something special in the overall composition here. So uh, Karim is very good at mastering this sort of composition, and it's why his pictures tend to really pop out. Um, now, there's another one I wanted to look at here, too. This is Twilight Force's uh, second album, uh, Heroes of Mighty Magic, one of my favorite albums, actually, and it has some great stuff going on. We have purple and orange. So one of the things that he does, besides using just a limited number of colors, most of the time the contrast is not between complementary colors, but a shade or a color that's maybe one off of the complementary colors. If you guys know your color wheel, maybe you don't. If you arrange the colors on a wheel based on the three primary colors and the colors that go in between them, you end up with this circular thing. And if you go across, you're going to get blue and orange are complementary, purple and yellow are complementary. Well, in this case, we have purple and orange. So rather than having purple yellow, you just go one over to orange. It still has a bright, uh, explosive pop considering how saturated this violet is uh, but we need something a little bit more orange if we had it fully yellow it would be maybe too much it might be too aggressive with the contrast otherwise we're looking at purple purple for the rest of this with a little bit of this orange again creeping in for the twilight horizon and if you were to look at the, um, the if you open up the album I've, I have a I have a video where I'm reviewing it and you look at the art on the inside it uses the same color palette but with a reversal of what is prominent. The oranges and and the sunset becomes more prominent with the purples kind of out towards the edges. It's really, really well done. And that one has like a portrait of all of the band members. Really, really beautiful um, work that he does with that. Um, so I wanted to talk about how I actually construct um, the covers that I designed. Because okay? I designed most of my book covers and even this one, um, I designed all of the typography and everything for it. And that's one of the ways that I save money. It's how I make money as an author really is I don't spend money on all of these various things. I don't uh, I don't have to spend money on a cover designer because I am a cover designer. I don't have to spend money on, you know, um, so that's a big one, cover designer. I don't have to spend money on marketing because I have a YouTube channel, right? <laughs> so um, it, uh, it really helps to keep the expenses down, which lets me keep my profits a little higher. So when I'm actually composing and I'm creating a composite image that's going to be used as a cover. One of the things I do is I actually do all of the image blending. And this is a blend of like 11 different images. I don't remember how many I use. It's a lot. Um, I use uh, Photoshop to do this. And I put in one of the higher layers. In this case, I left the, I left the colors as gold. But in one of the higher layers, uh, this is just a photograph of my screen, by the way. Total boomer thing, but whatever. Uh, I leave the colors as gold so that they because um, that's how I originally designed them and I can see the contrast and I decided the overall color I originally wanted to work with was blue so I used a um, a saturation filter and made it colorize everything into a specific blue hue and then you get the full range of that in blue and I ended up going with teal for the final one as I'll show you but this lets me look at the overall composition as a whole and lets me see how images are going to blend together once I 
actually start doing the coloring. Um, this way you're not worried about blending images together that don't have colors that match because you, if you're starting with stock photos, you're never gonna have colors that match. So instead of worrying about colors that match, you're gonna pull all the color that's there out of it and you're gonna recolor the whole thing. That's the way I do it. So um, I have pulled the color out and then I can see, okay, these clouds blend together. There's actually like several cloud layers, by the way, like three, I think. You know, there's a planet, which is gonna be interpreted as a moon. Um, some ships, uh, some water, some mountains and cliffs, and then some rocks and stuff that they're standing on. Two subjects that are standing there, and uh, you have all the you have all the things of the image. You have the the subjects, and then you have some background components, and then you have title text that tells you what you can expect with this. Now, if I'm going to pull that color filter off, it is a mess. You can see that nothing goes with anything else. We have gray clouds here, blue clouds, a crazy green moon, uh, black starry sky, green, bright green hills in sunlight, even though this is supposed to be at night, red and this these colors don't match and this is green and these two, wait, there's two different kinds of ground here and they don't match. Nothing matches and what's with these, these mountains? They're all, all the colors are off. So if you're trying to do a composite image and you're starting with the colors that are there, you're probably gonna end up with something that looks like this. This would go straight over to the bad book cover website. I don't remember what it's called, but um, wow, holy colors, Batman, that is a lot. Once we get the final coloring done, this is actually not the final, final coloring, but it's towards the end of the process. Once you get towards the end of the process, you get something that looks more like this. Um, this isn't the high res version because I pulled this off of my, uh, off of my blog here where you can read a little article that I wrote on this. This is the video version of that article. So after pulling all the colors out, I shifted everything rather than from this blue, uh, I went with the teal and then did a little bit more darkening to pull everything together. And then the subjects stand out because they have this yellow light. So there's only two colors, which is a really desaturated blue that's slightly on the teal side and then the color yellow. Uh, really, the, it's a gold color that's pulled off of the title text and pulled on to kind of highlight the characters. Otherwise, it's all going towards this bluish teal. So that's really how I design lots of my covers, and they all kind of go like that. If you want to look at some of the others, these ones are in the blog uh, as well. Crown of Sight. Uh, this one actually has three colors. It's a little bit more colorful than what I usually do. Blue, yellow, blue and then burgundy surrounding it. So the, the background color is really just the burgundy to off kind of go with the blue and the yellow. Um, three primary colors, it, it kind of works together. What we don't have is say like orange and yellow. Uh, so each of the colors contrasts with the other enough. Blue and red, blue and yellow both go together. Yellow and red both go together, together pretty well. They're a little bit separated on the color wheel. So you can do three primary colors or three secondary colors. Like if you did purple, you know, purple, orange, and green, those might go together. Uh, I think those would be kind of cacophonous, but three primary colors tends to work pretty well with the um, with the blue letters there. So pretty simple, just an object and just a color background. Really, I've done a couple videos on how you can make your own cover that's just like this really easily. Uh, we're just starting with one image and they work great for lots of different genres, fantasy, sci-fi. You could put a gun on the cover and it's a detective novel. Um, here's City of Silver, this is the first book uh, so that you saw the cover of book number two here. Um, so this is book number one. And you can see that there's basically no color. It's almost black and white, except for this, just a little splash of bright color in the middle. And if you look closely, you'll see that everything is actually shifted towards um, the teal, very, very desaturated teal, bluish, very bluish green, but just really all the color pulled out. And then most of it's just mixed between black and white. And that makes the silver of the city pop off. If this was just purely gray, like purely black and white, the city of silver wouldn't pop out and it wouldn't look like silver. But when you see this in person, the, the letters look like silver because we have that colored background image. So there's just some examples. You can buy my newest book, by the way. Uh, by the way, I also did it with this one. Blue and yellow, two colors. That's all you got for eyes in the walls. Uh, you can get my newest book, Keys to Prolific Creativity. You notice there's really only two colors for this, blue and orange. Contrasting colors, I went with something really kind of bold there, but uh, 
I don't necessarily recommend blue and orange, but because they're in the text, I think they, they work a little bit better than if we had like blue next to orange within an image. So you can buy that. And the audiobook is now finished. You can listen to the audiobook here on YouTube as well. So thanks so much, guys. And I'll see you guys next time. Leave me your thoughts down below with some of the artists that you like and how they use color. Most of the great artists, I just chose Karen Byatt because he's really good at this and his images work really well for covers. They have a definite pop in the digital space and they look great on Amazon or anywhere else in the digital space you might you might find them but great artists of the past have used this including michael whalen will use a limited set of colors rather than just having any colors that is disposable this is something i noticed with a lot of digital colorists is they tend to they tend to just kind of go overboard on the number of colors they use i see this with like newer comic book covers all the time they're just a mess there's so many colors that uh you can't even really figure out what's going on in the image uh, you start to lose sight of the total composition because you have every color at your disposal very easily in the digital space you're not having to mix paint on a palette and think selectively about what you're doing um you can just kind of go oh, well this one will be orange and i'll use this you know uh, so keeping it a little bit dialed in, a little bit simpler is probably the, the way to go if you want your images to have a big impact. So if you're designing your own cover, think of a few colors, maybe one. You know, you can do everything in blue. You can do everything in white, uh, not white, um, just blue and white works well. And um, you could do everything in green uh, or you can use, say, green and yellow or you could use blue and red or blue and yellow, something like that. So you can use two good solid colors that that kind of work with each other and offset each other, not complementary usually, not blue and orange, not purple and yellow, not say red and green, but maybe green and orange. Um, there may be one off on the color wheel and that tends to soften that kind of extreme difference between the colors a little bit. So thanks so much. And um, I'll see you guys next time. Uh, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe, all that kind of good stuff. And I will uh, be coming out with more content as we go. So big three points to take away. I'll just reiterate them at the end. Use a limited use limited numbers of color areas and then mix with black and white to get large numbers of, you know, uh, light colors and dark colors, you know, darker shades and use colors that are one off from complementary color and then you can use uh, contrast between neutral tones like that desaturated teal and bright vivid colors like white or uh, orange or any of those uh, those bright colors that we looked at today. So thanks so much and I'll see you next time.